I think the pickup on the Diggy is still a really good pickup, although I'm not sure. Like you can see, they're prepping off the Asperger because they pick up the Diggy already. So even if the shoe comes up, uh, the Asperger will probably get banned out by Yago and Galacticos, while Pix is probably gonna focus a lot more on prepping for the team fight. It looks like they take out the Nutella, so they don't want anyone that can jump onto the back line uh, against uh, the Kimi or even the Diki. So they're kind of preparing for this draft where uh, Pixies can pre prep for the team fight available to them. They don't want anyone that can jump the back line. They don't want someone that can catch Kimi out of position. They also obviously do not want uh, anyone that can kind of disrupt the team fight available because you're going to see the Hylos drop the glorious pathway and what this does is that it allows Impunity to catch up to the heroes of uh, Galacticos they want to close the distance between them uh, as well uh, and uh, uh, the Gregor as well as Sicilon because what you're going to see now is Pixies uh, having a lot of heroes that uh, have uh, near range potential with the Hylos, with the Leomon and what they're trying to do is close that gap between the range of their skills as well as uh, the Sicilon with the bad fist, you got Sicilon with the uh, long range strikes, and then you also have Gregor with the death so blah, 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 as well as the recipe. So I think Pixies is trying to prep for that. They ban out the Nutella, uh, claw, uh, two heroes that can jump the back line, and for Galacticos, they, I think the draft is centered around this Gregor. What they try to do is uh, pick up heroes that are tanky enough to be the front line, which mm -hmm. is Uranus as well as Grog, and then what they have is a joy they can go for the toss, they have someone they can go with the lock lockdown and then try, you know, try to bur essentially burst out whatever hero they can catch out. And yep, Pixis is finally going to pick up uh, the last pickup, which is the Asperger, which is no surprise. So why I think Young Galactus, uh, their threat here is try to catch the Asperger out to a bad position or a bad team fight, and then after that, uh, try to blow up whoever they can catch up. So I, I think in terms of drafting wise, Pixies do have that, uh, I, I don't know, I think in terms of um, threat wise, I think Young Gong Galacticos do have a better draft because of the Sicilian and the Grangle and the threat that you know, they have the joy to stick around. If anyone comes in, we'll just blow up. Uh, even if it's Asperger, we can just toss up in the air. It doesn't really have to... We don't really have to worry too much. This is what I would say coming up from uh, Younger Gatherers. Whereas for Purity Pixie side, they essentially... They want to deal with the Uranus first. They have to shred the Uranus down because if the Uranus sticks along, around for too long in the fight, that could become a really big threat. Uh, for PD pieces. See Monica down onto the middle lane with the Sicilian. So on Young and Galactical side, we got Uranus getting played by Shiro, we got Monica on the Sicilian, and up playing the Grog and K on the Gregor, while Yumiko is going to be playing on the Jawhead. And we're going to see our first team fight happen around here, and it's going to be a contest for the blue buff. Yuri doing really well on the Kimi. Revitalized being popped. And that was definitely a good engagement for Impunity because not only did they manage to secure their own blue buff, they also did not lose any rotation speed in terms of uh, getting the farm up onto Kimi. But the only downside I would say of that is that Imiko did manage to get a couple of free hits onto Tower, who's already down to half HP. But not too much loss in that fight, I would say.
A lot of purifiers on the side of Young Gun Gatico. Look at that, four purifiers. Uh, just to deal with the jaw hit. Obviously, they do recognize the threat of Imiko and, you know, essentially the win condition of Young Gun Gatico. So, <laughs> to try to burst down whoever is in the front line. In this case, you know, Jaw is just going to toss that person to the back line. Uh, they're going to try to use. Uh, Granger and Sicilian's potential, burst damage potential to, uh, to blow him up. And you know, in reality, the Pixies, they do recognize the threat, they're going for Purify, they're trying to stop that from happening. Meanwhile, top lane, Imiko is going to be pushing on with those missiles. And you can see Imiko has really good map awareness, right? She's, she's, she's obviously waiting because, you know, four members on Puny and were, were missing at the point of time when she was pushing the top lane. And because of that, they just, you know, she's just doing a good job and making sure that she's not caught out of position. And that rotation does allow Young Go Galaxy Ghost to pick up the tier 1 in the mid lane. A lot of items coming up. Uh, for the side of Young Gun Galacticos. We're gonna be summoning the speed, the speed, but just in range of the Bad Fist, which allows Monica to get that kill. That's gonna be the first blood for Young Gun Galacticos. We're gonna see the Uranus. Without the little one, Uranus is gonna be pushing down to the bot lane. But the members of Impunity Pictures are already there. So both teams are tower apiece. However, uh, Impunity are already working onto the turtle, which I feel like they should be able to get it. No issue there. Uh, question is, what will they do with the follow-up? We're going to spot Panda going right through. They're trying to bring Shiro down. And it will bring them to half HP. Panda being stopped by his own wall. And Shiro nearly going down. But now K joins the fray. The Death Sonata and the pullback coming in from the Sanguine Claws will allow them to get the high loss. But now Shiro sticking right onto Good Good. But Ruby's damage is just a little bit too much for them to deal with. It's gonna allow them to get the return kill. Meanwhile, top lane, Imiko getting stranded to by Nora. Pretty sure Nora should have the easy kill here. Meanwhile, bottom lane impurity pixels have already taken tier one on the bottom lane. And once again, this is a similar tilt to what we saw coming in from game uh, number 3, I would say, uh, of the game between uh, the two semi-finalists just now, uh, where, you know, Reborn had a really good draft in teamfight. And this is what we are seeing coming up from Young Girls because yes, the teamfights, they have the upper hand because of the tankiness as well as the burst damage coming up from Cicillon and uh, Nick Granger. But if you look at uh, Impurity picks his draft, they, they have really good split push because they have as much that they can uh, do with the, the Uranus as well as the Jawhead and then you know you, you have Diggy that can provide the CCB even needed, they have the early game damage, he's got reverse time here uh, that can you know pull someone back out of position and they just have more team utility, once again High lost the first one to go down And Ruby in a bad position, however, that range will allow her to stretch opponents while keeping in the distance. Good, good. Just blindly running forward, gonna get easily taken out by the Gregor. And I think what the Purity is trying to do here is uh, leave the Ashman to deal with the jaw hit split push. Because essentially, Esmeralda does really well against the Jawhead, and then they're gonna try to get the Kimi uh, to farm up as much as possible uh, to hyper carry this game. But like I said, when it comes down to a 5 on 5 fight, I feel like younger guys because just have too much damage. As long as they can keep the Esmeralda at bay away from uh, the 
Banger as well as the uh, Cicelon, I feel like Young Yatico should have a good shot at team fights. Shiro now going up against Nora. And we know how the story goes. We've seen it happen yesterday. She was just gonna respect the fact that Asmerna does well against the Uranus, but she still wants to cut that wave. Meanwhile, in, in forced to use the glorious pathway to get herself out of trouble. Coming up for the Cicelon. And they did an absolute good job at isolating good good. The Panda with the wall and then the flame shot to push her back. And, and that forced her into the power of Gregor. Gregor uses the Rhapsody. And that's gonna be an easy kill for the side Yago Gala. That's a good individual play coming out for Panda uh, to secure that kill. Well, K okay, is gonna pick up the uh, Blade of Despair. That's going to pick up her longevity as well, so that's going to provide more shield. Which ironically will play into the hands of Nora, because she's probably going to eat all that up. Look at the AoE damage coming up for Young Galacticus. For And that's from afar, all they had was Panda right in front. Gonna start up the turtle right here while the rest of Purity Pixies will have to make their way. A little bit too late, turtle already getting secure right there. Gigi once again. Taking a little bit too much damage from both the Cicelon and the Jawhead. And the reason that Impunity are finding a little bit of trouble with uh, trying to find team fights is because they're just out of position. Man, now getting saved by Nora, who used the falling star wound, but they instantly back out. They know that K and Monica are around. Meanwhile, top lane. Uranus having a good fight against Google. One more speed should do the trick, but here comes the rest of Puny. They're just gonna chase it to pieces. The tower is gonna allow Kimi to pick up a kill. Puny Pixies find a leader of hope. Next team fight. Meanwhile, we got the mid lane already taken down. Should be able to get this one more hit. A young Don Gatic is there. I'm gonna be too greedy over there. Here. Probably gonna go for endless battle while we've got Granger trying to complete the same thing right there. Mid lane Kimi just trying to do her best to take down the creeps. So here we go, Wild Charge coming up, knocks out both. Gigi used the reverse time, but it's a little bit too late. Now Nora in the middle of it all, oh, and this is where the S murder will work really well out for Impunity Pixies. Top lane, no one will get down the Cicelon, but Nora still on the chase. Ruby though, a little bit too far away from the engagement. You can see Nora, she wants to re-engage. Ruby still has a seat, a seat, but I don't think they will be able to get anything more out of the fight. So 2 for 2 for both teams. That does put a little bit of a dent on the Galacticos lead. Well, we saw a good team fight happen coming up from the Pretty Pixies, right? You know, essentially they lost Inging earlier into the fight, and that has been the case for most team fights. I was just about to say, I feel like he's taking a little bit too much damage before the fight happens, forced to use the glorious pathway once again, even before the team fight. And in that case, I think if Miat used uh, the shield a little bit earlier, that would have been good for her. 
They get the stun up onto Shiro. Shiro forced to use the ultimate. A panda now wants the game to group war. Remember, that war as well as the, the wild charge was what allowed them to take down the high loss and Gigi really early into the fight. <clears throat> because of the fights coming up on Shiro to deal with the Asmorda in 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 a really good spot to catch someone out. Can they get the stun out to Monica? No, she doesn't. But they get the toss off and Hylos nearly goes down. Yeah, although they did manage to find the Grok hidden in that brush. And now do they take a lot? That is the question. As well, I'm gonna keep new raiders at bay, but Granger hit him right onto the bush. Good, good. Didn't land right on him, but they managed to catch the raiders out of position. But then the raiders is just so tanky, it's just so hard to bring him down. And Nigi obviously with the auto alarm bomb uh, to harass both the Sicilon and the Granger. Nigi's probably going to go for a little bit more defense. I feel like picking up the Winter Truncheon would be a good idea. I know it sounds weird, but the Winter Truncheon can actually help her with uh, surviving the team fight, especially after using uh, the time journey. And then, you know, just popping the Winter Truncheon. And while her team gets away, they can, you know, once members of Jungle Gatikos are put into the fight, because they see that the... the the Diggy is isolated from the team. This is where the opponent comes in for Nora to jump in uh, with the following star move. But as of now, Imigo trying to chase down Imigo. Uh. And they're looking for the re engage. Shiro now on the run. She's just gonna use the purifying right there to break out of the reverse time from Digi. Mian, taking a little bit of damage from the wall charge, but she should be fine now. Shiro caught by the stun coming from Ying in the wall to isolate her from the rest of the team, but looks like no one wants to follow up. And now they do catch the jaw head, tries to go for the toss, but that was not good enough uh, to keep herself alive. Now Panda could be the next target. The wall charge to bring the Digi down, and the Doris probably will get laid down, but they really lost the Kiwi, and this is where Young Galacticos can take over the fight. However, it looks like they might want to make the Lord their priority. And that was a good catch up for me coming from Young Galacticos. You see members of Impunity just trying to run a young girl there because they're trying to just get the kill, but it's just caught a position. Once again, a wild charge coming up to stun up both the Asmoda and the Hylos. <coughs> Pretty sure the Hylos will go down right here. 42 seconds without the Hylos. Lord's gonna probably come up on the middle lane. Or it goes up on the top. Oh, they did a little bit of damage earlier with uh, the Uranus. Oh, young Gun Gatica is going to start off with mid by clearing up those waves. And look at how quickly both the Gregor as well as the Sicilian can clear it up the moment the wave comes in. And here comes the Lord. It's going to do a Lord Rush. Gonna bring the tower down to half HP and Sicilo with the bad fist. Instantly they get the toss up onto the highlights as well, onto the back line. Glorious pathway being laid up, but it's a little bit too late. And now they're gonna try to catch the little one. Thankfully, the glorious pathway is there. Asmana being forced to use the falling star with to get out of range. 
Rango with the death sonata to start the fight. Maximum charge comes out from Ruby. But there is just damage lacking on the side of Ubi Pixels. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be GG. The Crips are pushing in, and that's gonna be game one going in the way of Young God Galacticos. Good game, yo. Uh, coming up from that day. They essentially held on to the the trust and the Rango as well as the Sisalon to do the uh, to do the damage. And you can see in terms of team fight. When it comes down 5 on the game, I feel like Young uh, This is the reason why I said at the start of the uh, draft that Young Galacticos did have a bit of more flexibility. Because they, they do have enough damage. You can see in terms of itemization. Hold on. Yeah, I, I believe it's gonna be Tail Vendetta. So Vendetta got through because they won Reborn. And then now we're gonna see the second finals between uh, Impurity Pixies and Young Galacticos. Obviously, Young Galacticos walking away with uh, Game 1, and then uh, we've got currently uh, Game 2 going on. Pity Pixies, they ban out the Valor as well as the Sicilon, so they do recognize the threat coming up uh, from Young Galacticos. You can see them very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, comfortable with fighting against the Esmeralda, and the strategy behind it is very simple, right? Essentially, what you want to do is isolate the uh, Asmara, get her as far as away as possible from the team, right? Let's just push her aside, let's not deal with her, uh, let's try to focus on what we have in front of us with the Gwenga and Sisson. We have a lot of burst damage, we have a lot of um, not only AoE but single target damage as well. So let's just take out the, the high loss, and once the high loss goes down, they do not have a front line. Even if Esmeralda comes in after the fight, we have enough damage because we've got NOD on the Uranus, we've got NOD on the Sisalon, we should be able to bring it out and that's what they did coming into game one. And now for game two, they pick up the Grog Bruno as well as the Xbox, and then we've got Young Galacticos picking up the Halos as well as the Uranus, which I think is pretty good. So something really different uh, coming out for game one. Uh, they also, I think carry would be good choice here, right? Something to stretch through the tanks. Uh, the question is, can they protect the carry as compared to the first game where we saw the Kiwi just being left alone for the most part, not being able to contrib contribute to team fight. So that's where I think uh, we're gonna have to. But uh, they ban out the Claude as well as the uh, Atlas, which I think is pretty decent bans. You know, heroes that can uh, die from the back line and you know wreck havoc. And then you also have the Claude getting banned out because of the speed of farming and how well he's doing currently current mana. And they also pick up the Hylos and Uranus. Uh, I think Gringo is a good pick just to match the pacing of the Bruno. They need someone to dive onto the background. I think enjoy it for them would be really good. You know, a, a sort of a hero that can uh, dive on the back line, you know, target aim someone and then toss him backwards. And, you know, you Joy just does really well for Impunity Pixies because they can actually pick up. Uh, uh, they don't really have to run him as an off laner if they don't want to go for the uh, 1 2 2. They can even go 1 3 1 and then have the X Pocket Joy as the separate uh, off laners, you know, and then try to pick up maybe one more Mage to support them in the mid lane. Which I think, if you look at the choices right now, Selena does really well. For Pixies, uh, so if I'm Pixies, this is the dropout run. I will, I will, they ban out the Nana, which is good. Uh, I think they should pick up both <clears> the <throat> Selena as well as the Jaw Hit. I don't, I think those two heroes will do really well for them. And then, uh, essentially, try to catch up either the Grand. Whereas for Young Galactic side, uh, they do need a little bit of support for the Hylos because the Hylos is constantly getting. Uh, I would say isolated from the rest of team fights. Even if she's here the front line, they don't really have someone to follow up even after she's there soaking up the damage. It's, she's essentially taking up damage that doesn't need to. It, it's unnecessary and it's just a waste of HP. So they need someone to follow up from there. So I think Uranus can do the job, but Uranus is going to be split pushing for most of, uh, most of the part. They pick up the Leobot and Camilla, which I think it's fine. I think Camilla is a really good support to have. On certain greedy pixels, but um, uh, the Leo mod should be able to contribute to team fights as well. I, I, I see the draft to turn run as quite similar to what I propose for them, except for uh, instead of the Selena, they, they want someone that can stick 
by the Gronk and Camille just does a good job on that. Uh, but Camille no longer has that movement speed, so I guess sitting on the Bruno would be a better choice. Uh, Young Gatikos, they pick up their final member of their lineup, which is going to be the Layla. I think Layla has worked really well for a couple of teams that pick her up. We saw Rebo picking her up as well, so I want to see how they can run it. Uh, Chow is going to be the addition to the team, which is really good. Uh, they can kind of kick the Leo one away with the Way of the Dragon if he gets a little bit too close to the Dragon. So essentially, it's kind of like a 4 protect 1 strat coming up on Young Gatikos with. Uh, the whole team just kind of revolving around that uh, Dragon. Now we are back with game two between Young Gong Galticals as well as the Beauty Pixies. We're looking to see who's gonna be the team that goes up against Tail of Vendetta in the grand finals. Remember, it's gonna be a best of five as this team is battling out to try to get themselves that 4k diamond. Of Shiro pushing up onto the top lane. Looks like they want to contest for this blue buff. Not only did they fail to get the blue buff, they might just lose the first buff, but here comes the damage coming off the magic shockwave from Monica on this. And they get a double Q. Both Qs going in the way of the Layla, which is always good to have on that mage. And she's essentially going to pop off really early with that. Look at that, she's already got the magic boots up. And yeah, Monica's looking to be a very scary... ...player coming into the first half of the game. Well, at the first <coughs> of the fight, I felt like, you know... They might not have gotten blue buff, then that magic shotgun just came true uh, and it just ripped the members of the Beauty Pixies. No, no. Not the best stuff on Beauty Pixies and the perfect one for Younger Galacticos, but more importantly, can they hold on to this lead? Well, she was really split pushing onto the bot lane. <coughs> And she's doing a good job at, spool, uh, at you know, cutting the wave off proxy farming, making sure that you know the beauty pixies are not able to defend that tier one turret. Meanwhile, Ibiko on the opposite end trying to do the same thing, but gonna converge now onto the middle lane. So Ibiko preparing for a team fight. They might be able to catch out Ruby, but no, they decided to catch on to the Grog, the only one available for them. That's going to be the flame shot coming up as well, coming up for the Lelia. Enough damage to bring the Grog down. And good timing on the team fight, because 15 more seconds and the launch will come up. The Glorious Pathway allows them to catch up to Nora, even with the Steed getting summoned by Nora. Well, in the individual battle at the top lane, Shiro doing a good job at strating good good. And I don't think they will be able to get a Q here. If Shiro uses the ultimate, he should be able to walk right out of there. And that's going to give Young Gatikus the space to not only take the turtle, but probably push down the bottom turret at the same time. Young Gatikus doing a good job at splitting picks his attention across all three lanes. Initiate 
And the goal for Imperial to exist now is just try to get the farm up on Bruno, try to get the endless battle up uh, ASAP. And hopefully tr that's going to be enough damage. But root good now, and the bottom, they drop the glorious pathway. They want to get this kill onto the Axe Box. And despite not getting it, they still secure the tier 1 on the middle lane. They're going to trade it for the bottom tier 1. And Young Lung Articles is just constantly one step ahead of their opponents. You can see, despite losing the tier 1 bottom, they got both tier 1s on the top and the middle for it. They even nearly managed to get good good. So, really good trade coming up from Young Lung Articles. And remember, they managed to win game 1, so they must be feeling pretty good right now. Team Morel at the highest level, but now Monica going to come to mid. To try to defend, they get the slow on Zim. Remember, she no longer has the extra movement speed uh, on her second skill. I'm sure, she's starting to feel that impact coming right through. Good, good, getting the kill onto Hero a little bit too greedy, but they definitely can't afford it since they are in the lead. The wall not exactly perfect, but it does deter them from getting the tier 2 in the middle lane. Good job from the Beauty Pixies. But can they defend their blue buff here? Yes, they can. I'm gonna give it over to the Bruno. And K is already nearing that blade of despair. Very kiss jungle her uh, jungle wave should be able to get them live this bear up pretty soon. This turtle will definitely secure it. Look at how quickly they can take it with the Uranus and the rest with you. Oh, Camille is trying to come in. Camille is come into still away but a little bit too late. Last insanity already used Ruby with the crit coming through. Getting the kill onto Uranus. They get the second kill onto the high loss. But this is where YG will take up. Way of the dragon comes up, kicks X Ball out of position. Gonna give the kill over to Monica, who's already 5 and 0 on this leader as I speak. She's got the glowing ward already up. And Imiko went for Blade of Haptor Seasons. So every every time she uses a skill, be it uh, Shimpo or even the Jikundo, uh, she will have uh, more damage on the next attack. And not to mention, she has Will of the Dragon. So I think this is just a really good pickup coming up for uh, Jungle Gats because a hero that impurity don't really have an answer to other than to purify on Ruri and Nora. And once again, they get the gank off the bot lane. We're good being forced to use last insanity early into the team fight, but not being able to defend the tier 2 down in the middle. And they are already starting on the tier 2 in mid. Younger Gatikos just steamrolling waves after waves. PewDiePix is unable to defend that tier 2 down in mid, but Bruno did manage to push the top wave. So I did find a little bit of a farm there, did complete her endless battle. Well, we're going to see the Bloodlust Axe completed on both the Axe Bog and the Neobot now. Can they do something right here? Jikundo coming up, going to lock up onto Zin. And I'm going to be using the Glorious pathway as well to allow them to catch them up while we got Grok just running away from the team fight. Good good taking quite a bit of damage from the media. I'm gonna get the kill. They probably can steal the red buff away and now. Brute Force Armor coming up on the Uranus that's going to help with the movement speed as well as tanking up the damage coming up from Impurity. Well, they're going to drag members of Impurity down the top lane while the rest of the members are focusing on clearing up their wave. So they're trying to hit that timing before the Lord comes up. They want to get the buffs ASAP. And 
And what Impurity Pixies need to do now is essentially get a gank in. And if you can get a gank out of uh, Young Gatikos, they might be able to take a team fight. The issue is Impurity um, as a whole do not really have heroes that can gank really well. Like yes, they have a lot of damage in the Bruno, they have damage on the Xbox, but they, they, they are heroes which you see coming, right? It's not like a child. It's not like a Uranus who has that burst damage and also have the surprise uh, element of surprise when it comes down to ganking in bushes. That being said, Impurity are behind 8k goal lead for Younger Gatikos. Like they want to force a fight before the Lord take. <coughs> well, he is standing in front of the members here. She's taking no damage as of now, but she will already pushing down onto the middle wave. Meanwhile, the rest of Younger Gatikos already standing up on the Lord, half HP, and Panda as well as Chao are trying to keep the rest of Impurity away from the pit slot. They're doing a good job at it. And now if they want to take a fight, yes they can! Zorro's pathway being laid down and Xbox will get taken out instantly. They managed to get the leader out of the way. But good good. Just surviving with Slither help on Zane will have to go down for it. But more importantly, Young Gatikos did manage to secure the Lord. See, they're already making their way down into the middle lane. They should be able to secure this tier 3 in the middle. Last is Sanity coming up onto the back line. That bird should be able to secure the kill onto Panda. And the child comes in with the Chikundo. But Shiro might be the second one to fall. They did manage to secure the tier 3 in the <coughs> middle lane. And Young, young Go Gatikos will walk away with minimal casualties. Remember, they did not have Monica before the fight happened. So they will walk away with what they can get out of the fight. Well, a tier 3 isn't that bad after all. It is only a tier, uh, rather, uh, uh, the first lot. Shiro now gonna be cutting that wave. The power a little bit more pressure onto members of APAD Pixies. And this is where Young Gatikos really ramp up in terms of aggression. They're just gonna camp right outside the base, you know, cut every single wave that comes up, not allow impurity pixies to farm. And what this does is that it's gonna starve them out of the jungle farm. It's gonna starve them out of whatever resources they need to catch up in this fight. And even the eye, even with the eyes dominance coming out on the grog, uh, if you can't really get to uh the Grango, which is constantly being, uh, which is constantly just so far away from the rest of the team, I think it really doesn't help with them. In fact, they need something that can get the stun off. I think the anti chorus is what Grok really needs in this fight. And last is Eddie gonna come up onto the back line by the Axe Bolt, nearly catches the Grango out, but now good good in a lot of trouble. Chikundo coming up from the child to bring him down. That's gonna burn away one immortality charge. The ball just transferring in between both Monica and the Grango. Which isn't ideal, but both of them are still alive. This is the most important fact. It's as long as they can keep both the Grango and uh <clears throat> Lydia life, young Gatikos do not have to worry about the damage output. Okay, <coughs> probably gonna go for the 
last item right now. And on top of all the damage that they have, it's not like Jungle Galacticos is um, gambling with this strength because they have uh, they have the black shoes onto Monica. They have you know uh, immortality on. Uh, they they don't even have immortality, but they have just so much uh, HP on their tanks. If you look at the Chow and the fact that they have a Uranus and a, and a High Loss. And now Hylos speaks up Queen's Wing as well, so that's going to help with sustaining in the fight. So they have a very stable front line. At the same time, they have a lot of damage on the back. And now Ying Ying going to check out the lot, make sure that Young Gorgaticus are not starting up. But now they're chasing the, the Grog further and further away from the rest of the team. And they're probably going to get the easy kill here. Death Sonata is going to get the kill onto the Grog. And without that front line, it looks like Younger Gatikos can start up on the lot right now. Immortality going to come up on Monica, so... Just to further emphasize on the fact that they want to keep her alive. He's already got that NOD for against uh, the Xbox as well as the Leo one. Shiro just trying to be a mutant and cut that wave coming out from Impurity Pixies, but. Looks like they want to force the any game right now. They're gonna commit five members down into mid. They managed to bring down good, good immortality being burned, and glorious pathway will allow them to charge onto the back line. Uranus just using the implosion onto the back. You've got them sticking right onto the Camille who Camilla who also burns immortality charge, and they try to force the end game. One more hit from the Granger should be able to do the job. But Bruno with the crit coming right through. They take down three members on the side. Young Galacticos. One more hit from the Lord. And somehow, Impurity Pixies keep their, their throne alive. Although they did manage, or rather they did lose their tier 3 on the bot lane. Well, that was an intense fight coming through. And that was thanks to Camilla uh, uh, being able to pull off her skills before she got brought down. But that was a really good team fight, I, I gotta say, because if you look at the way um, the fight actually brought out that was actually really scary because uh, initially both uh, Xbox as well as Camilla had their immortality getting burned out but then at the very last fight you can see they, they got sucked into a fight they were not prepared for Jungle Galacticos they tried to force the issue you know Uranus going in with the implosion and then you also had Lydia trying to force the fight with the magic shockwave but there was just not enough damage because uh, if you look at Camilla, she just gonna jump and use the ultimate curse of blood and then you know try to uh, sh uh, Stay in the fight as long as possible and that was what really worked out for the side of Impedia Pixies the fact that uh, Camilla and Krog did manage to hold the front line as long as possible for Bruno to actually take down both K as well as Monica who in a really bad spot <clears throat> And not to mention, that was a good knockout from Wild Charge, uh, a good Wild Charge knockout coming in from Ying Ying. And those split seconds of being knocked up was what allowed Ruby to, you know, do what she does best, with, uh, best which is uh, just a lot of physical damage. And if you look at the itemizations coming up from 
the Sun and Yangon Galacticos, essentially only the Uranus has a Twilight Armor. So she's practically the only person on the Sun and Yangon Galacticos that can soak up damage whatsoever coming off of the Brutal. But now Yangon Galacticos, they, they know their win condition, they're ready to take on all three uh, tier 3 turrets. On the base, they're probably gonna go for the Lord pretty soon. It's gonna <coughs> come up in about 3 seconds now. Meanwhile, you have the rest of Impunity Pixies trying to defend their base. Those super minions can be quite a hassle to deal with, especially towards the late game. But now you got Yangon Galacticos, they have to give up the Lord. Glorious pathway being laid down. Where is the follow up? There it is. They can manage to isolate Grit away, who's going to use Last Insanity onto the back line. Not enough damage to bring down anyone. And I'm pretty sure this is where Good Good will go down. Meanwhile, on the other fight, you've got Chow going down as well. So, one for one. Ruby out of position. Shiro trying to stick right on top of the Brutal. And with Xbox out of the way, they should be able to resume their task of taking down the Lord. And this time around is Iggy who's once again trying to scout out the Lord. And I'm not sure if Panda did. Oh yes, Panda actually did manage to burn the Glorious Pathway. They get the stun up. And they get once again the kill onto Iggy. But at least Impurity Pixies managed to deter the Lord Tech coming up from Young Gogatikos for a little bit. Request backup. Request backup. But that does buy them the time. And now Young Gogatikos, they want to go for the back door right now. They get the kill right onto the Grok earlier into the game. And now they get the kill on the Camilla. They're going to try to stick onto Nora right here, Chikundo. And not only that, the way of the dragon to kick him back. They burn the kill, the banner, but they burn the immortality charge onto the high loss but still they get the kill 40 seconds before both of them come up and now Shiro already making the way into the mid Bruno's gonna deal with him one more hit from the Bruno should be able to get the kill onto the Chow and look at the crit damage and one more hit and Bruno gets taken out a very greedy gameplay coming out for Young Gogaticos and Impunity Pixies punish them hard Well, Shiro was doing a good job at staying in Impurity Pixie's base, right? And she was basically trying uh, to backdoor right there. But Impurity Pixies, they had none of it. They were just so focused on stopping the Lord Tank. And Young Galatagos was playing a little bit too greedy. They were trying to go for the kill onto the Xbox, onto the Leobot. And that just dragged them out of position. That left Ruby free up and ready to just go into the back line. Now it is Panda who will go down for that, despite having revitalized. But the good thing with Young Galacticos is even even though they lost the Lord right there, uh, if you Pixies still have to be really concerned uh, with the backdoor potential coming out for Young Galacticos, right? They have the Uranus as uh, she was still able to cut off the wave. She's still able to do a backdoor, and that means that Young Galacticos cannot push with their full strength. Because uh, they have to, to leave a member of their lineup to defend against the Uranus push, and they're gonna get good good to do that. Remember, this is the third lord of the game, so he's gonna be pretty tanky. Well, they isolate Shiro from the rest of teammates with the wall. And they're not able to get much out of this lot, but they do manage to get a tier 2 in the middle lane, which I think is not that bad. But now, can they get Gugut alive? Yvaina just sticking up on the Chikundo as well as the Shimpu. And that's gonna draw the Uranus right onto Gugut right there. Meanwhile, Gugut desperately trying to stay alive. And 
thankfully Shiro should be able to get out just in time before Impurity Pixies cut her escape off. Well, what looked like to be a done deal for Imperial Pixies, they managed to get a good fight with the misplay coming from Yago Galacticos and well, YG, they have to be very aware of this fact, like, despite them having that, you know, goal lead at the very start of the game, you can see it's really, it's really cut down to 2k, every single member is now full build, except for maybe the Camilla, who still has a mask, and maybe for the Lydia, who's trying to build into the final one, I'm sure Blood Wings is gonna be the, uh, final item that she's going for either that or maybe even a genius one I, i'm not sure I, I think both are really viable items although i would prefer her to go for the genius one which i think does provide a, a lot more utility given that the uranus also does magical damage so it does help both of them if she picks it up that being said if she goes for blood wings she has more burst damage so i think both is really viable depending on what she wants to go for like what's the motif of the last uh, item uh, but impurity pixies man they have been holding on to this game for so long 24 minutes now and and speaking of the goal lead this is what i talked about young guys because they had the lead cut down by so much because of that mistake And now even Shiro might go down to bring her down to slay her health. Good, good. Being forced to use last insanity. I'm not sure if that was the timing where she wanted to use it. But 95 more seconds before the Lord comes up. And even for Imigo, who's already at full build, like... She has a very interesting role in the Younger Galacticos lineup. Like her role is just to make sure uh, she can CC up anyone who's out of position and then use Ray of the Dragon to further isolate that member away from the rest of the team. And she's been doing a pretty good job, right? To catch on to Nora, uh, she's caught out in a couple of times already, and even for good, good. And it looks like Panda will go for the Ice Dominance. Just to slow down the attack speed of the Bruno and Leonward. And remember, Ice Dominance slows down the movement speed as well. So that's one more reason why everyone should get Ice Dominance. It does stack, remember. So, the more Ice Dominance there is on your team, the slower the opponent attacks and runs. They're trying to catch Shiro out of position, but they leave the gap onto the back line, and damn, this is scary. Young Gorgaticos now, they're trying to force the end game. But here comes the rest of Impurity Pixels to get back just in time. They force the flicker out of Imiko, and that's going to be a child without flicker for the next 120 seconds which has been their main mode of catching someone out. But at this point, both teams looking to be a bit hesitant at committing to a team fight. That means that young Gargaticals do have super minions running down all three lanes of UPD Pixies. Base. So Impurity Pixies, they cannot take this fight outside their base for too long because those waves will start to push in. It's going to give Yango Gatikos the space needed to either take the Lord or even go for a backdoor. And now War Charge is going to come up off Ying Ying. If we go with the Way of the Dragon, they bring the Xbox out of position. But the rest of the team are more concerned with the Uranus. And now Google in the middle of it all. Last Insanity being burned off. Still healthy, revitalized, being dropped. And now the High Loss. Where is the Glorious Pathway? There it is. It doesn't matter though. Ruby with the crit. He brings down two members in mortality. And now Zayn in the middle of it all. If we go, going to run away. And... They've fallen for so long that even the second last insanity is blown up, but now they want to pick up the the, the Xbox. Shumpo gonna allow him to catch other position and Grog's gonna sacrifice himself just to make sure. 
that Xbox stays alive, but once again, they get the knocked up onto Ruby. I think Ruby's pretty much dead right here. And one more hit from Imiko. They do burn the immortality. Can they keep her alive? Yes, they can. But no Xbox and no Grog for the next 40 seconds. And young Gogaticos finally get what they came for. And that is the Lord. Ooh, <laughs> that Lord Swing nearly took a hit. Man, the Lord just does so much damage. I mean, there have been times in games where... I know some of you guys can laugh at this, but... Man, the Lord just takes me out in the middle of a team fight, no, and that pisses me off so much. And it's just something that players absolutely hate. I think that's one feature of the Lord which I, I absolutely love. I, I love it. It's a love hate relationship between me and the Lord. Yeah. 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 Now Young Gongaticus is looking to 5 men push down, they are way down in mid, they managed to isolate the Camilla away from the rest of the team, Xbox is going to be not able to escape the Camilla and even he is in trouble, rest of the team, so much crit damage and now lot at half HP and I'm pretty sure this is going to be GG, Young Gongaticus after a painstaking 30 minutes battle finally get game 2 and they are your second semi final uh, rather finalists. They're gonna go up against Tail of Vendetta, and those two will be in the grand finals. Well, that was a really tough game, but congratulations to Young Gongaticos. That was uh, one heck of a team fight coming up from both ends. You can see that at the very final point.